Hi everyone and welcome to my floor. So um, today is Tuesday and it is my turn to give my review of Goblet of Fire this week. Um, Goblet of Fire was one of my favorite books, or it was like the favorite book back in the day when I was like 13-ish, yeah about 13. Um, and then after I reread the series a lot, I realized Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite, but um, that's not what we are discussing now. Um, what I really liked about uh, Goblet of Fire is the introduction of like international wizards, like you know the different different magical schools, and then as seen in the Quidditch World Cup, like you know different wizards and witches, and like because before Goblet of Fire, like you know, Harry Potter mainly focused on the wizards in the UK, mainly like the British, like. Britain and Scotland area, areas, and um, it, it was just quite fascinating to see like something like Quidditch to unify all of these nations as does in the Muggle world, like s other sports, like, you know, I guess soccer is the most international, yeah. But um, anyway, there's that, and um, the Trivers tournament itself, I thought that was rather um, exciting, but Goblet of Fire just seemed like a lot of stuff just happened, the Quidditch World Cup, the, you know, the Rise of Death Eaters, and Triwizard Cont- Triwizard Tournament, um, there's just a lot of stuff going on for poor little Harry, and like, you know, I think back when I was about 14, and I tried to put myself in Harry's shoes, and I'm just like, no, when I, when I was 14, what was I doing when I was 14? When I was 14, I was just, like, you know, going to class and watching Cyber Chase when I got home. Or was I... That was, that was 12. What am I talking about? Anyway, same difference. But, um, there's that. And, um, like, as Prisoner of Azkaban was, Goblet of Fire had its own, like, mystery factor to it. I, well, basically all the books do, but, um... In Goblet of Fire, it was the whole, you know, Barty Crouch Jr. was the one doing it, and he was pretending to be well, doing it, as in, like, you know, being behind the whole... I don't know how to explain this. I need to stop saying words sometimes, but, um... Like, you know, he was pretending to pretending to be Mad-Eye Moody, and I would, I would not have seen that coming. Like, that's just what I really loved about uh, these books. Some things I just didn't see coming, and... Uh, Goblet of Fire is a great example of utilizing that through, um, just everything. Like, the same thing with Rita Skeeter, that she was that Seems little, thank you, that little, um, beetle. I just, this book was just quite fascinating and filled with all sorts of surprises. Uh, but out of my, out of the three tasks, I think my favorite was the maze, just because it was just so full of suspense and if I went through it, I would have just freaked out and shot sparks in the air, like, right as I got in. <laughs> but, um, what I really admired also was the character development of Harry. Um, like, when he sees Voldemort rise again with his unwilling help, you know, his blood, it's, like, it's totally different than in the past books because this is the real Voldemort. It's not Tom Riddle the memory or, you know, the what's left of Voldemort it's stuck to the back of someone's head. It's, like, the actual Voldemort, and, you know, that's traumatizing. And then he also witnesses Cedric dying, so, like, this is really where Harry, like, just all of a sudden begins to grow up. That's pretty much the stimulus. And it just sets off a rift. And uh, also, as uh, my final note, because I'm going to wrap this video up now, uh, Ron Weasley, this, I honestly think this was the book where he was the funniest. He was just, like, cracking jokes everywhere, and I loved it. Um, except for, you know, the part where Ron and Harry were fighting. That was just ridiculous. Um, and Hermione's not an owl. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, tune in next week for Order of the Phoenix. Okay, bye.